Any questions about the registers? OK, so what were they again? What's the low register? Chest voice. What's that super high register? Head voice. And what's in between? There you go. OK. And remember how they feel. And that'll help you know if you're singing in them correctly. OK? So that's part one of mixing. When you come to singing, you've got to make sure that all three places in your voice have balance. And you need exercises that bring them up to balance if they're a little weaker. Part two is something that I actually want to show you guys real quick on the screen. And this is where we get into vocal cord function. So that's your voice. Check it out. <laughs> OK? The big gray part that you're seeing is the front part of your larynx here, you can feel this. This is the hard cartilage, and this is what's protecting your voice and housing it. So if everybody puts their fingers lightly, yeah, you can feel, you can feel that hard cartilage of the larynx, OK? And for, for pop singing and contemporary singing, we call this the vocal box. And you can feel that. And that's housing everything and protecting it, that hard cartilage, OK? Now inside, if you're looking, the, the top green arrow is pointing to what's called the thyroarytenoid muscle, OK? And we're going to talk about that. But you see the thin white lines that are on the inside of that red muscle, those are your little vocal cords. And they're about the size of your pinky fingernail, which is kind of incredible if you think about it. They're about this big, and they're making all that magic voice happen, okay, from the low voice to the high voice. So those are your vocal cords, and they're connected to that big, long outer muscle called the thyroarytenoid muscle. And to, be, to make that easier to remember, we call that the TA, the TA muscle. And you want to remember this because the TA muscle is responsible for your power, it's where chest voice and speech comes from. The TA muscle are rotators, which means they turn towards each other to bring the vocal cords together to make strong sound. And you can feel that real quick. Everybody say, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and you'll feel those rotators activate and bring those cords together for each little, each little sound that you're making. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> say, hey, man, what's up? So when you make those big sounds, you're feeling that muscle activate and bring those cords together. If they were loose, you'd get, hey. Hey, man, what's up? Try that. Hey, hey, what's up? Right. And when we're singing through our scale, if you get a big break, hey, then that muscle just quit. It just said, I'm done. I don't want to play anymore. OK? And so it pulls open, and the chords lose their connection. So that's a really important muscle, especially if you're trying to establish strength and power. OK? The problem is, is that you see that it's bigger than all the other muscles in there. And the problem is it can overwork. So if it over squeezes and over closes the cords, then you get stuck and you feel like you can't get out of your chest voice. And that happens to a lot of people that are trying to belt or sing with more power. That's also what makes your voice feel tired is when that muscle squeezes too hard. OK, so that's an important muscle. Now you see the outside muscles, those other green arrows, and it says the cricothyroid. And these arrows should be pointing to both sides of the voice. Cricothyroid, okay? So that's a, that's a secondary muscle group inside. And what that muscle is trying to do is it's trying to lengthen and stretch your cords. So as we sing from low notes to high notes, your vocal cords stretch front to back like a rubber band. And they get longer and thinner. And the thinner they get and the more closure that they can get, the higher pitches you can create, okay? But it's a completely different working group. And you can kind of feel that. Cricothyroid is related to your head voice. So when you're making head voice, you're using mostly that muscle. We call that a CT. That's, that, that, that's the nickname for that muscle, CT, cricothyroid. And we call head voice a CT dominant production. Whee! Whee! So see how that feels a lot less thick and a little bit looser than the TA muscle? The more airflow is being allowed through. The cords have lengthened and thinned out, and they're stretched to a thin coordination. Whee! Right, and the TA muscle is short and thick, and it's closing together. Hey, hey, hey. And you can kind of feel those opposite actions, OK? So chest voice is TA dominant, because it's mostly, mostly the TA muscle. And head voice is CT dominant, because it's mostly the CT muscle. OK, now if all of this is overwhelming, it's OK. But what's important for you to understand is that you've got these competing muscle groups, and they're trying to help you out. But most singers are letting one muscle group do too much of the work. So if you're singing like rock and pop and musical theater and things that are a little bit more chest dominant, you're probably working that TA muscle a lot, but you use a lot less of this muscle because it doesn't feel so good. And if you've grown up singing classical music or choral music, maybe you've used the CT muscle a lot, but then you wish that there was a little bit more potency potency and power to your voice. So when we're talking about mixing, the science of mixing, okay, it's teaching these two muscle groups to cooperate. 
And that's really important because a lot of times you guys will hear this word mix and it's a big buzzword and your teachers will say, you need to combine your chest voice and your head voice. Mixing is when you put those two things together and you think, well, that's a great idea, but how do I do it? And so you've got to start to understand that each of these muscles is contributing a feature to your singing. One is about strength and connection and the other one is about flexibility and release. And if you don't have both working for you, you're gonna feel like you're one-sided or like you're coming up against some frustrations or some hesitations in your singing. You're either gonna get stuck and tired and feel like the, the range is limited or you're gonna feel like you can sing really high but maybe you don't have any power. Maybe your voice is a little airy or breathy. So that's great, Kurt. How do we get them to cooperate? So what we need is we need some exercises that gently activate the TA muscle so that every time we sing, we're getting a nice connection. It's not loose and it's not weak, but at the same time, it doesn't allow that muscle to over-squeeze. And if that muscle isn't over-squeezing, then the CT can come in when it's appropriate and start to stretch those cords back to front and give you the range and the flexibility that you want. So let's try it. There's different exercises that we can do it. The first one that we want to do is use hard consonants. So everybody say for me real quick, g g g with a G. Mm -hmm. Or if, if uh, like a lot of my Latin speakers that are signing on, the, the G is a little bit different, so they, they do better with like a C or a K. K, K, K. But you just want to make sure that it's not too harsh, okay? So use whichever one feels most comfortable to your voice. But when you activate that hard consonant, you're gently activating the TA muscle and you're getting these little closures on every note. G, G, G but then it immediately releases, okay? So we're gonna follow that up with a vowel that supports the CT muscle, and those are gonna be your narrow vowels. So for instance, give me an oo and say oo. Yeah, the CT loves oos, and it also loves choral es. Say ee. So we're gonna try those two, okay? Check it out. So if my tendency has been one of those two frustrations, and I'm coming to singing, and I'm kinda overdoing it, I'm going like Ah, that's me trying to hang on to that TA muscle, that chest voice. And then if my teacher says, well, you need to release. Ah, ah, okay, that release is too great. Okay, so I got into the CT action, but the TA failed. So I've got to do something that brings them together and check it out. If I use a G, teaching those two muscles to co cooperate for the first time. And as my muscles reprogram, I can start singing pure vowels and get And that's when I'm getting both features. I'm getting a smooth connection that doesn't fail, but I also have flexibility in my tone because I'm not over squeezing. Can you hear that? All right, let's get to singing. Let's try it. Let's come from the chest voice, okay? And let's try it. Let's get on one of these. Make sure you feel a nice kick so that you're working that new action. Goo, 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 goo. And then you follow it up with a hooty narrow vowel. Okay, let's try this together. Two, three, four. Goo, 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 goo. feel excellent. It should not be tiring. Round your lips. Yeah. Round your lips so you feel that back vowel and let it go right up into head voice as soon as it wants to. And then come back down to chest. Feel it go back and forth. Good. Now, in this class, we have so many different voices, okay? So you've really got to sing wherever you're comfortable. It's not a competition, and you could hurt yourself if you do these exercises wrong, okay? So don't be concerned with what your neighbor might be doing. Be concerned with exactly how it feels and make sure that you're building your own voice, okay? We're going to go a little further. Two, three, four. kick. One more. High C. You finding some success there? Okay. A couple of things to keep in mind. The kicking action should be at the base of your tongue. So if you're seeing your mouth bounce around, go, 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 and then you got to let go of that. It's super simple. Look at my face real quick. Here's me up on that high note. Like nothing, okay? I do this first thing in the morning. It 
doesn't tax me, it, it, it inspires my voice, okay? So make sure that it doesn't feel tiring. Also, keep the vowel small. <clears throat> There's a lot of things in voice that, that are a little bit counterintuitive. We think we would need to open our mouth to sing higher and higher and higher. But actually what we need to do is tell the voice, remember like, like I said, if you open that door too big, you get stuck in the chest voice. So by softening the front of the mouth, you're actually creating more space inwardly and you're teaching that voice to go up high where it belongs in head voice, okay? So you wanna feel that. You wanna feel a soft opening up front and feel like there's more movement between the mouth resonance and the head resonance, okay? Good, let's try gi. And check out my mouth here. Gi, 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 not gi, 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 Okay, let's try it. Coming from the bottom one more time. One, two, three, four. Gi, 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 gi. Good, go for that success, where it feels like a strong note, but also it has flexibility to go right up into your high voice. Make sure you're feeling it move from chest voice to head voice, and then back down. Get a little more advanced, okay? So we're gonna go okay. Now we're changing all over the place. Let's find those registers one more time. Chest voice, hey, hey. head voice, Wee! Wee! and middle. Mm. Good. So we want to feel these these traveling around, okay? And you're gonna feel like it's on a spectrum as you move up and down. Those notes need to be able to change, so you almost want the voice to tell you where it wants to sing. Stop trying to push it and pull it around and start to allow it, okay? But make sure that you're not getting stuck in one area. If I got stuck in my chest voice, I'm going to start to feel like I'm, I'm shouting, and that would be like, go, 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 Okay, we don't want that. We also don't want all head voice, though, and that's actually a little more common. So as I get higher, be careful. We don't want to go, 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 and we go, that was easy, yeah, but it's not connected to any of your other voices, okay? This is something that's so important to understand. All of your favorite successful, healthy singers that can sing consistently and make amazing sounds, they sound like they have one instrument, but it's because they have balance in all three parts. So as they travel through them, you hear that the audience gets a balanced sound. It hears equality. They're singing up and down and all those voices sound balanced and the same. What you're dealing with is you may have spots in your voice that are a little weaker. And if you're not doing exercises that bring you to those weak spots, they don't get better. So instead of avoiding them by changing keys or singing another song, what you want to do is go right into these weaknesses each day and make sure that you're bringing them up to a balance. And that's what these exercises are trying to do. Does this make sense? Okay, let's try this together. Googie sounds like this. One more time. I'm going. Goo -goo 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 -goo. Nice and quick. Everybody try. One, two, three, four. You got it. Let it move. Remember, soft, pouty lips. Feel that inward vowel. Top notes release. Feel the bottom notes reconnect. high C and if, if, if that's not if, if you're not making it all the way up that's totally fine okay now what we want to do is remove those consonants and see if we get any benefit to the voice now this may, may this may make you go back to cracking and flipping but let's try it listen to me start up top Ooh -ee -ee -ee. Ooh -ee -ee. Ooh -ee -ee -ee. 
I'm trying to move in and out of those, those registers. Okay, let's try that. Starting in the top. So way up high. One, two, three, four. Feel it change. Okay, if it flips, you're gonna get better and better as you practice it. Nice. Interested in more voice training? Visit us at wolfstudiosnyc.com.